Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we are going to be planting some paper pot trays. So I'll be showing you how I use the drop seeder here. We're going to be talking about the different types of paper chains you can use for a paper pot transplanter. Um, some options for you. Uh, if you don't actually have the paper pot planting machine, you can also just use these chains and plant them by hand. So even if you uh, aren't looking into getting the, the machine right now, uh, I'll give you some tips on how you can use it just getting started without it at all. So all of my stuff here, this is all from paperpot.co. This is Curtis Stone and Diego Footer's business where they've got all the best stuff for the paper pot. So I'll just explain what all these different things are and then we'll get into it and we're going to start uh, setting up the chains, adding our soil and dropping our seeds and it's super easy and quick. It's really amazing to have the drop seeder and not have to sit here by hand and then drop them all in. So very cool. Oh, and I got a new hat for my birthday. It's pretty awesome. It has a little neck guard and everything. You guys know how I love my hats. Okay, so the first things I'm going to show you, this is the paper pot tray. It's slightly larger than a 10 by 20. It's made very strong. It'll last for a long time. Um, then you've got your spreaders. These are for spreading apart the paper pot chain. So spread apart the honeycomb. And we're going to spread them onto this device here. Each of these paper pot chains represents uh, a different spacing. So the 15 is a six inch spacing. The 10 is a four inch spacing. And the 303 is a two inch spacing. So we just kind of have to remember that. So this I'm using for lettuce. The four inch I'm using for beets. And the two inch I'm using for green onions. And I'll show you what I do with this. I actually, um, the beets I do as their own bed. But what I do with the lettuce and the green onion is I interplant them in my beds. I'm able to get a lot more produce out of one bed. So I'll do the lettuce and the green onions. When I pull the lettuce out, I direct seed radishes in there. And that's what I've been doing to really maximize my, my yields with the paper pot. Okay, so let's set up some chains and I'll show you how to get the soil in here. So Curtis in his videos, he, he recommends getting a bunch of these. Um, and if you were going to do a lot of trays at once, that, that would be very smart if you had like five or six of these things so that you could do a lot in one step. And you'll understand that in a moment here. So we'll do our lettuce first. There's 264 cells in each paper pot chain. So for one of my 40 foot beds, I only need one of these for a bed. So we'll be taking one of the spreaders. And you can see in between the white sections here, you can actually slip it right through there and you'll take it all the way to the other end. Then you'll take the other one, put it through the white and go all the way through. And you just want to be careful not to rip when you're doing this part. So just be real careful. Then you spread it apart like an accordion. It's pretty cool. And so the most important part, you'll notice that one side of the chain will be slightly off center. And you'll notice on this, these teeth, that these ones right here are light, are a little bit off. You want to match up the chain to that. So if I'm looking at my paper pot chain here, I can tell that the ones down here are offset, the ones down here are offset. So that's this is exactly the position that I want it. So that's what it's going to look like. See how these are offset? The ones up here are all nice and straight. And you're going to fit the teeth on the first chain, just on the inside of the first chain. And it can be a little bit weird when you're first doing it, but you'll get used to it. So now we have these set up, they're in there. We can take the spreaders out. Let's put my hand on top there. So just in case they don't pop off, then we'll take the tray and put it on upside down. Okay, so you just wiggle it back and forth and eventually it'll fit on there really nicely. And we'll flip it over. Okay. And now we're at the point where we can add our soil. And then once we add the soil, it'll lock all the chain in place and we can take the spreader out. 
This is a soil mix that I made from my own compost, peat moss, vermiculite, and worm castings. All made here, except the peat moss. And uh, I'll post a link to the video where you can see how to make this mix. But this is the mix I use for my soil box. I use it for all every way that I start seedlings. I'm gonna make sure we get these paper pots all super full of soil. And I've noticed that the more soil they have in there, the better, so that when we take the spacer out, it doesn't collapse very much. And that'll help us when we do the dibbler and the, the drop seeder. And then I like to keep brushing it until I can start to see the honeycomb because that'll help us for using the dibbler. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to see what you're doing. Okay, so. And I just dropped it just to make sure I had lots of soil in there. I do. So now we can take the spacer out and it helps to hold down on the chains. Otherwise, it can kind of get messed up sometimes. Okay, that's done. Now we need to wet this. So I can check, make sure that it is fully wet. I can just kind of dig around in one of those holes there. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna give it one more little blast. So this is the paper pot dibbler, designed for the paper pot. And we just match up the holes the best we can. And that's why it's really important to pack enough soil in there so that it doesn't shrink um, when you've taken the spacer tool out. I'm just looking all around, make sure it's I'm getting a decent dibble in all the holes, and then I'm gonna press down. And boom, just like that, we've got all our holes. When I first started, I had to sit here and, and poke them all in by hand. So we're gonna be doing lettuce, and I just got these seeds from Haas. If maybe you've seen my double wheel hoe video, I got it from them. They're a fantastic American-made quality tool company. They also sell seeds now. And um, if you're interested in buying any of their stuff, uh, please buy it through my link. I have a link down in the description for Haas tools. So anything that you buy, it's a way that you can support the channel and get some of their just awesome stuff that they uh, provide for us small farmers and gardeners. So what I'm trying is their most heat resistant lettuces that I, I could find right now. And so I'm doing a Calshot Romaine, Starfighter lettuce, and Skyphos Butterhead. And by the time I put these in the ground, I'm gonna be putting these into shade cloth. So these are all pelleted seed. And it's really important that you, you use pelleted seed for your lettuce for the paper pot transplanter. If you use the drop seeder and you use raw lettuce seed, it'll drop way too many lettuce and you'll actually have to come and thin them out, which you really don't wanna to have to do. It's a really time consuming job. So you're gonna need the pelleted lettuce to do it. So one thing you wanna be very careful of before you add your seeds, you wanna make sure that you see how this board goes underneath this other little lip here? You want to make sure that you're not pulling it out beyond this, because when you dump your seeds in, the seeds will go in and under that. So there's actually a very small window um, of space where you're going to actually move this drop seeder. So you'll put it like this so that the seeds will be captured in these holes, the smaller holes. Then you'll push it forward to go over the top of the big holes. And the entire time, this piece of plexiglass is, is only moving within a half inch. Okay, so I'm gonna move it into this position so that I can capture my seeds. So I'll mix these all together and at the end, I'll put them in a single bag and mark them so just that I know that it's a, it's a mix of seeds. And you know, basically whatever, I'll just let it randomly happen. Whatever falls in the, in the holes is what's gonna be planted. Okay, so now what you gotta do is just, you move it side to side, back and forth and capture all the seeds on the little holes. So now we're gonna line up these larger holes over all the cells. And it's not gonna be exactly perfect, but it'll be good enough that they'll fall in the hole, as you'll see. 
Okay, and now I'm just going to push this forward and they're going to drop in. And then before I remove this, I want to be sure and pull it back. I want to pull it back so that none of these seeds left are going to fall through. Now I can take it off and then I'm going to pour my seeds back into the bag. So for the leftover seeds, you'll shake it and you want to make it fall all towards the edge where all the holes are not. And then that makes it easier to get back into your bag or wherever you're going to put these. And then I'll just do a quick check. There was a couple that didn't get a seed. Okay, and then that's the final product. And then you, as you can see, every single one has a, a seed in there. A couple have two, um, but that's just gonna be excellent. And then our final step right now is just gonna be to lightly cover these. Put some across and then take the excess out of here. Excellent. And then we'll do one final wetting of the soil and this is done. So our next one's gonna be beets. So I'm gonna be using the number 10 for that. So for beets, I need two trays of them. And I'm actually out of the 10s. So what I'm gonna do is try to use some two inchers and when I direct seed my beets, they get as close as two inches or more and they, the beets grow fine. So this will be a fun test to see how the beets work out spaced every two inches. Okay, so now we're gonna do some beets and with the beets as well. I just mix the seeds together so that I can get a couple varieties in my paper pot bed. So, uh, first thing I ne always need to double check. <laughs> I've definitely screwed this up a couple times. You gotta make sure the hole's in the right space and that the lip here is covered as well. Okay, we're good. We're out a small amount of Detroit Reds. All these seeds are from True Leaf Market. Um, that's another company that I really recommend for getting your seeds from. Uh, I get basically all of my seeds from True Leaf, even my microgreen seeds. I've got a link in the description uh, for True Leaf Market as well uh, as a way you can support the channel. So I'd love it if you could uh, buy, buy through that link if you're considering buying your seeds from True Leaf. Okay, this is Chiogia. This is a really beautiful beet and it's got those pink and white stripes when you cut into it. It's a really cool one. And then as you're doing this, you want to be careful not to push the plate forward and drop the seeds out accidentally. So I'm, I like to grab onto this edge actually and make sure that I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and then I'm going to move the rest of them down to the bottom there, get them out of the way, and then squeeze. And since these are bigger seeds, some of these, I need to kind of hit the board to make them come out. So there's a, you know, just a few holes that, that got missed there. And with the beets I've noticed, you know, you don't need to thin them out. If you have two or three beets per cell, that's actually really great. Since we're doing every four inches, it's not that tight packed together. So if you have a couple beets in each of your cells, it actually works out really well for a good yield. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be doing the 303 two inch chains. And this is gonna be for the Tokyo Long White uh, Bunching Onions. So this is what I like to use for my green onions. They do a little bit better in heat. I'm gonna to need to do two of these for one of my beds. Since it's every two inches, you don't get as much uh, length. So you gotta do more. I was gonna do a full bed of just green onion. I think what I did before was um, four full trays. But now that I'm doing this in, uh, interplanting technique, I'm only gonna needing two at a time. So another way that I've also tried to help the paper pots from deforming when you take out the spacer is to actually get it wet with it in there and then take it out. Um, you know, try out both ways and see what you like better. I don't notice a huge difference, but I wanted to just mention that that is a possibility.
All right, once again, we're gonna get our drop seeder set up, make sure that the small holes are separate from the big holes, that the plastic is still underneath this lip. Very important. I keep repeating that because I've made the mistake a few times now and it's very frustrating. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pour out my... Now for the green onions, there's gonna be multiple seeds that, that fall into each hole, but that's fantastic because you can get a lot more yield if you allow them to all bunch together. And then as you're harvesting, you'll pull out the ones that are biggest first and then allow those smaller ones to grow up. So you'll actually be able to grow a lot more green onions that you can harvest per bed. And then that's how I've been doing it and had really great success. So you could see that if you had a bunch of the spacers and you had all these set up, you could do a lot really, really quickly. You know, you could do thousands and thousands of seeds at a time in a very short period of time. So, and it takes some practice. It definitely takes some practice. I'm not going as fast as somebody who's doing this all the time. Um, but I don't have to do that many beds since I'm such a small farm. Okay, here we go. All set up, finished. I just got to keep it moist and they'll germinate perfectly. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for this episode of Nature's Always Right. I've got my five trays here for my next succession of the paper pot transplants. And I've just really enjoyed using this tool, um, whether I've been using the machine or I've been using uh, just doing it by hand. You may have seen in my other interplanting video where some of my interplanting was done with uh, leftover paper pot green onions. So it's a really versatile uh, tool and one that is really a game changer for small farms and even larger size farms, multi-acre farms as well. Uh, so be sure to check them out at paperpot.co.